Hi, I am back. <laughs> so, I am so happy. Let me make sure. Oh my gosh. This is just some night. Hang on with me. Stay with me. All right. Let me go. Okay. We're going to go. We're going for it. Fourth time is a charm. Fourth time is a charm. So I am going to continue this. And um, I hope that I still have some friends here with me. Tonight on More Monday, we are attempting to learn more about God. <laughs> so it has just been a crazy night. And so I just want to thank you for staying with me. And I just want to get my notes here together and come on and encourage you to stay with it. Whatever it is that you're, you're facing right now, stay with it and keep going. Listen, God has been showing me a lot about himself. And we have been doing this awareness series. We have learned that God is our shepherd. He is the one leading us and guiding us. He is everywhere. He is fighting for us right now. Believe it or not, he's with me here, and he has given me peace, and, and he's given me joy, and I refuse to quit because I know that God has something for somebody. Somebody right now is trying to listen to these words, and I believe that the enemy is trying to keep us from hearing them. Now, granted, the last little mishap was my fault because I forgot to plug in the Mevo camera, and it gave out a battery. But let's just start over. Let's just take a deep breath. And tonight or more, I want us to become aware that God is our door. As I was saying earlier, um, every time that I get ready to move on in this series, God just reveals a little bit something more about himself, something else. And last week, I was reading in Proverbs. And let me just share with you the verse. It's Proverbs 5. Now, it's talking about adultery. It's talking about the, the um, proverb is about having the wisdom to stay away from immorality and not go near an immoral woman. And it's, it's, it's some wisdom to Solomon here. Excuse me. It's wisdom. Uh, David's son Solomon. These are his wisdom. And so he is trying to teach us how to go through life. And so maybe tonight you're not having trouble with adultery. And as I read it, I'm like, oh, it's not really a, you know, a struggle in my life. But I think that we can learn from this passage and apply it to our life in other areas. Because maybe we're not having a sinful, um, sexual, adulterous affair, but we might be having an adulterous affair on God. Maybe there's an idol in our life. Maybe there's some sin that we're holding on to and chasing after and moving toward every day. And the results are going to be the same. And so I was reading this, this verse in, in chapter 5 of Proverbs. And, and it says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. counsel. Then you will have discernment and your lips will express what you've learned. And so it, it talks about an immoral woman. And you can also think, I believe, that an immoral woman, you can think about it being sin. It being that thing that you lust after. That thing that you want to have. And it says it seems smooth as oil, but in the end, it's a bitter poison. It gets you. And so it says her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. For she cares nothing about the path of life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. So now my sons listen to me. And I believe this is God saying to us, never stray from what I'm about to say. Stay away from her. Stay away from the door. We're going to talk about the door. Stay away from the things that will trip us up. Remember when we did that study about cutting loose the things that entangle and ensnare and trip us up so that we don't run the race that God's called us to run? Well, here God is saying, don't go near her. Stay away from her. And then it says in verse 8, don't go near the door of her house. And so I was thinking about this door. I was picturing a door, kind of like the one behind us. But look at the blue doors. The blue doors, is, at least they kind of look gray-blue to me. But those doors, they represent choices in our life. Maybe they're desires of our heart. And here we're given this warning, don't even go near the door. Why? Because in those doors lies death. 
lies confusion. And so I kept reading uh, chapter five, even a couple hours before I came on tonight. And when you walk through the doors of the world, when you walk through the doors of your desire, it says that you lose honor. So this is all in chapter five. It says you'll lose your honor. You'll lose all that you've achieved. You'll, um, your strangers will accumulate your wealth. You'll bring anguish and disease, maybe mental disease, maybe um, physical disease, public disgrace. You know, um, contrast that, though, to God's door. And that's what I was, I was thinking about as I was reading Proverbs. I was like, you know, God, there's these doors in life, and it's saying stay away from them. Don't even go near them. But yet you say that you are the door. And you tell us to come near you. And that just really hit me that we've been studying, becoming aware of who God is. He's the door. Yes, his, his son and, and God is the good, they're the good shepherd. They're the ones leading and guiding us. They're all powerful, all knowing. They're everywhere. Last week we studied about him being our covering. But this week it was like this revelation. He's the door. He is the one that if we want life, if we want peace, if we want a calmness in our spirit, he's the one that we need to go to. He is the one we need to go through. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father unless he goes to the door of Jesus Christ. That's the yellow door. There's one door. And I'm not making this up, so don't shoot the messenger. This is what the Bible says. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you, want, do you need a way tonight? today, whenever it is that you're watching this, do you need a new way? Is the way that you're going leading to confusion and death and maybe um, disease and public disgrace and you're losing it all? Do you need truth? Are you ready for a new life? Well, it comes through going through the door of Jesus. And Jesus beckons us to come through his door. And he warns us not to go through the other doors. So he says, come to me, all who are weary, all who are tired, all who are heavy laden, all who are confused, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. He says, come to me, and I will give you rest. He says, draw near to me. Come to my door, and I'm going to open it up. <laughs> and you come in, and we're going to dwell together. He says, seek me, and you're going to find. Ask, you're going to get it. Knock on that door, and guess what? I'm going to open it up. And we're going to abide together. Jesus says in John 10, I don't know if you have your Bible tonight, but if you could look at John 10. We've spent some time in this verse already, talking in this chapter already, talking about Jesus being the good shepherd. Well, it says here too in John 10. Let's see here. John 10, 7. It says... Um, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the door for the sheep. Other versions say, I am the door. I am the door. And I, I read a little bit about the door, the gate of a sheepfold. And I, I thought about putting that up tonight. But the sheepfold had had like, it was a stone wall around. And there wasn't like a physical gate there. The shepherd was the gate. The shepherd would actually lay his, his life down, lay himself down at the entrance way. He'd lay there and no one could come in or go out without the sheep knowing it, without the shepherd knowing it. And so that's what Jesus is saying. There is one way into this fold, this fold being the, the sheep of Jesus Christ, the, the kingdom of God. There's one way in. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. And so it says here, it goes, I tell you the truth, I am the gate. Yes, I am the gate. This is verse 9. Those who come in through me will be saved. So I studied that word this week, saved. It's the word sozo, which means they shall be made whole. They shall be restored. They shall be healed. They will be rescued for all of eternity, but also for now. For God has come to give us life here on this side of heaven. And so a lot of times we're just waiting for everything to get better. We're waiting for that day when we get to go to glory and, and go to heaven. And, and like I heard the pastor say this weekend from Open Door, Pastor Sean, he says, 
we are ready to go to heaven, but God wants to get heaven in us. Well, what is heaven? Heaven is that where there is peace and there's joy. It's a whole different kingdom that we get to live in when we go through God's door. And I don't know today if you feel unsettled, if you feel tired, if you are frustrated, God's saying, come to me. Come to me. Go through my door. I am the door. I am the way to life, to the abundant life. And if you come through me, you're going to be sozo. You're going to be saved. That is the word for saved, sozo. You're going to be made whole. It also says that those who come in through me, they will be saved. They will come and they will go freely. To me, I, I researched that some over the weekend. And what that was the hardest phrase for me. I'll just um, be trans very transparent here. I was like, Lord, show me what, what does this mean? Because he says three things. If you come through my door, you're going to be saved. You're going to come in and you're going to go out freely. And then it also says that you're going to have good pasture. And I looked up the pasture and that talks about you're going to have all the provision. Everything that you need for life, you're going to find it when you go through the door of Jesus Christ. But he also says you're going to go in and you're going to go out. So as I read about that, those are the same words that it says in Deuteronomy, that God's blessings are going to overtake you as you're coming and you're going. May he bless you as you're coming. May he bless you as you're going. It's also this freedom. I believe that in Christ we have this freedom. And as we go through life, as we're coming in and we're going out, Every single day, we got to be going through Jesus. We got to be going through that door. And as we go out, we go with Him. And we have freedom. And we have wholeness. And we have provision. And so I don't know what you feel like today. I don't know what your experience, but I do know that there's a lot of doors in life, but there's one door where you're going to find life. There's one door where you're going to find hope and peace. Will it always be easy? I, I don't know if you saw the first part of this, this broadcast. And those of you that are watching in prison, you're just seeing the final product here. But it, I had to come on four times. <laughs> and that's how it is in life. We just got to keep getting up when we get knocked down. And as a water skier, the words I would say is hit it. <laughs> I'd say hit it to the boat driver. Every day, you're just going to have to get up and you're going to say, I'm going to hit it. I want to walk through that door. We walk through the door of salvation once where we say, Jesus, come into my life. And the Bible says that when we ask Jesus into our life, we are saved for eternity. By, eternity. by faith, we are saved, not by our works, not by, by our good works, by keeping the Ten Commandments. We keep the Ten Commandments because we love Jesus and we obey him because we love him and out of thanksgiving for what he's done for us we live a certain way for him we live our life as a thank you note as a thanks offering to him as a living sacrifice of praise that's what we do but every single day of your life you're going to have to make a choice which door are you going to go through maybe you've walked through the door of salvation but even though we're saved doesn't mean we're mature even though that we're saved doesn't mean that we don't face, we will all face temptation. We will all face temptation. We will all have trials and tribulations. The Bible says, I believe it's John 16.33. Let's look there. John 16.33. It says, um, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I've overcome the world. When you go through his door... There's victory. God has already overcome the world. Jesus laid his life down and he overcame everything that you're facing today. Mental depression, mental disease, depression, anxiety, fear, um, financial issues, health issues. He's already paid the price. He's already given you a victory. It is up to us though to walk it out. To walk it out. Now, I, I wanted to focus. Hold on a second. I get talking so fast. <coughs> my throat starts giving out on me. So, 
I want us to go to Genesis. Genesis 4, 7. This is Cain and Abel. Now, Cain is so jealous of Abel. He's really, really jealous. And he's angry. And God comes to Cain and he, he says, you know, why are you upset? If you do what was right, you're going to be accepted too. He's, say, he's, he's saying, Cain, I'm not just favoring Abel over you because I love him more. No, he's choosing to do what's right. And so I, I, this is one of my favorite verses. I say that every week. But Genesis 4, 6 says, why are you angry? This is the Lord saying this to Cain. Why do you look dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must master it. You must subdue it and be its master. So I, I picture these doors. We've already read in Proverbs where the wise man is saying, don't even go near the door of temptation. Stay away from it. Every day, we're going to have these choices. Do I have this thought? And maybe that thought starts to come like, no, I need a way out of this thought. I'm going to go through the door of Jesus. Because I know that if I have this thought, this, this jealous thought, this angry thought, um, then I, I am getting closer to one of these other doors. And when I get to those doors, sin is crouching at it. Sin is crouching there, and he's, he's like a, the Bible says the enemy is like a roaring lion, and he's ready to pounce on us. That's why he says don't give the enemy a foothold. Turn to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. So you, you picture with me what we just read in Genesis. Sin is crouching at one of those blue doors. He's not at the yellow door. The yellow door is Jesus. Victory Think about a gold medal, that yellow door. Victory is yours when you, every time when you go through the door of Jesus. On the other side of that door is peace, is more. We've been studying about having more. On the other side of that door is the abundant life. Everything you need is in that door. It's in this word. How do you go through that door? First, by faith. It says in Ephesians that God has given us the opportunity to go through the door of faith. So you go through the door in faith, but every day you choose Jesus. You say, Jesus, my desire for you is greater than my desire for that. For that desire, for that thought, for that, that action, whatever it is. My desire for wholeness and health and purpose and joy is, is more and greater than my desire for whatever's behind door number two and three and four. You're more important, and I'm going to make a sacrifice, and I'm going to lay this down, and I'm going to go your way, Jesus. And it's not always easy. Sometimes those doors might even be good, but they're not God's way. And so it's not God's best behind those doors. God is our door, way to truth and life. In Ephesians 4, it talks about, um, let me look here. Ephesians 4, 26, that's Galatians. No wonder it's not making any sense. Ephesians 4, 26, the Bible says, um, don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Anger. We've already seen Cain in Genesis had, Genesis had jealousy and anger toward his brother. And he was really probably angry at God. We have here anger towards people. That anger may be toward yourself. That's something I've had for many, many years. This issue of, of self-hate and disappointment in myself. And I could forgive everybody else. I don't carry grudges against other people. But if I have a hurt, um, it's, it's hard for me. If I have a hurt toward myself, I guess I'd say. If I'm disappointed in myself, that's really hard for me to just have grace for myself. But I feel like God showed me today that even anger toward ourself opens up a foothold. Because in that anger, self-loathing, self-hate, beating ourselves up, 
what we're doing is we're not focusing on who we are, the victorious one in Christ. We're not loving ourselves. And the Bible says, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love others as you love yourself. And if we don't love ourselves, if we're holding anger toward ourselves, we're opening up a door for the enemy to assail our mind, to assail our health. I know for me, I had a lot of health issues because I was always trying to be perfect, always angry and frustrated at myself for making mistakes. And in the end, you know, I, instead of going through the door of rest and the door of peace and joy, I stayed angry and anxious and frustrated and fearful, fearful that I was going to make another mistake, mess up. So I'm like hanging out at these other doors and, and I'm opening a door for the enemy to come in and assail me and attack me. Today I'm on the beach and it, today's Labor Day when I'm filming this and I was on the beach this morning and I'm walking and I come across a bunny, a bunny rabbit. He's dead, dead as a doornail. And he's laying there at the water's edge how he got there, I don't know. There are a lot of bunnies in the area at the beach where we were, but this bunny already had been eaten up a little bit, and I saw him because my dog was munching on him too. It was disgusting. But as I, I just went over and kind of looked at this bunny, his eyes were plucked out. I mean, he was hollow right here. And as I'm walking away, I could just see this picture in my mind that that's how a lot of us are living. Because we are where we're not supposed to be as believers, the enemy is just plucking away at us, getting bites out of us, having control over us. And that's what God says to Adam, it says to, excuse me, to Cain. He says, sin is crouching at, your, at the door and it wants to control you. It wants to eat you up, but you have to master it. And if we're in a door, at a door, in a place that we're not supposed to be, that's when the attacks happen. That's when we think about if somebody's chasing after you and you get the door shut and locked, it's locked. But if, if it's not all the way locked and they get their foot in there, you can't, you can't get it shut. And somehow they're coming in. We got to shut the doors. We got to shut all these doors and we got to run to that door. To the door of Jesus. There you will find the help that you need. It says, come boldly to my throne of grace, where you will find the help and the mercy that you need in your time of need. You don't have to be afraid to walk through that door. You don't have to be ashamed. He says, come as you are. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Turn to Jeremiah 29. And we're going to start closing this up. But Jeremiah 29, 12 through 14. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to start. I just saw this. Let's start in verse 10. Chapter 29, verse 10. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. He's talking to the Israelites. He's saying, you're, you're in a dry place. And you still got some time there. But I'm coming. And I'm going to do for you all the good things I have promised. And I'm going to bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are good plans, not for disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. When you go through that door, friend, there's a hope. There's a future. Again, we're not talking about coming through it for salvation because I'm under the assumption that many of you have already done that. So if you haven't, you got to go through the door of faith. You have to ask Jesus to come into your life and you say, I surrender my life to you. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me, that you paid the price for my sin, that you took all my sin, you removed it from me. The wages of sin are death, but you, you died, so it's paid. And I believe on the third day you rose again and now you are ascended in heaven and you sit at the right hand of the Father. By faith you were saved. But then every day, friend, is what I'm talking about. After that, you got to run to Jesus. Come to me if you're weary and you're tired. Come to me if you've been in captivity. I've got good plans for you. i got a hope and a future for you. 
It says, in those days when you pray, I'm going to listen. God hears your prayers. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. You run to that door of Jesus, you're going to find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you, and I will bring you home again to your own land. I love that. He's bringing you out of captivity. Run to the door of Jesus. There is a way out. Maybe going back to our first verse in Proverbs 5, there might be some doors of temptations. Maybe it's the way you think. Maybe you have such a pattern of the way that you think. It's time to start staring at that, looking at that door and saying, okay, let's think about this. God, show me what is it that's attracting me to that door, that way of thinking. What's attracting me to that way of acting? What is attracting me to that way of spending or that way of eating? Or what is it that's going on in my life, God? He'll show you. Psalms 139, at the very end of that chapter, search me and show me if there's anything in my heart that's offensive. We're asking God to show us, to identify these doors, to identify the ones that we're running after instead of going to him. And, you know, there will be temptation in your life, but I want you to know in 2 Corinthians no, 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. If you have your Bibles, look at that. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. It says, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. This just tells me every day, keep your head up and keep looking for that door. You know, I think about today, how good I felt about coming into tonight. I just, I'm like, Man, it's just been a smooth day. It's going to be so good tonight. <laughs> and you know, be careful when you think you're standing strong because I had so many technical issues and I just assumed everything was just going to go so smoothly. And it says, you know, that's how we can go through life sometimes. We just, I got it. You know, I, I'm just feeling so good. I've got it. And we take for granted all these doors. And all of a sudden, we go through the wrong one and we fall. It says, the temptations in your life are no different, though, than what other people are experiencing. Right now, you might think you're the only one in the battle that you're in. You're not. You're not. There's other people right now dealing with anxiety, dealing with fear, dealing with sickness, dealing with self-hatred, dealing with grief. And he says that you're not the only one that's attracted to those doors where sin is just lurking and wanting to just attack you. He says, but God is faithful. God is faithful. And he will not allow you to be tempted more than you can stand. And when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. You know, the Bible talks about those temptations, not talking about trials. I have a, a note here. It's talking about being tempted to go away from that door. A lot of people say, you know, the enemy's trying to trip me up, and they blame everything on the enemy. Well, James tells us, you know, uh, first of all, he says, James says, don't be blaming God for your temptations. Oh, he's just testing me. God does not test you with evil. We may go through tests where we have to believe God and have faith, but God does not come and just wave heroin under your nose and say, are you going to choose me or heroin? I mean, he does not tempt you like that. It's your, let's read James. <laughs> this is really good. James. Um, <laughs> Siri's over there talking to me. Uh, James 1.14. James 1.14. It says, temptation comes. Let's go up a little bit. James 13, 1.13. Remember when you were being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone to do wrong. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away, this Christie version, to one of those other doors. Those desires give birth to sinful actions, walking through those doors. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. 
when you crack open that door and you start walking through those other doors, sin is crouching at the door and it wants to devour you. But God is faithful and he will always give you a way out. And what is that way out? This is what I wanted us to see. It's Jesus. Every day, whatever we're fighting, he is the way. He is the door where we are saved, where we're made whole, where we get to come in and go out freely, where we have freedom and we're not held in captivity, and where we're given good pasture. This is all from John 10. And that good pasture is the provision. The provision you need maybe to, to overcome those other doors. And so, friend, I want you to know that God loves you. And right now, we are warned not to go <laughs> near those doors. Don't even, you know, whatever you stare at and fixate on is where you're going to go. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus. You know, I think it was April. I think it was Abraham. It says that he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one that was invisible. The one that he knew existed. The one that you know is beside you. You keep your eyes on Jesus and his word and his truth. And you keep following his way. And when these other doors were presented Maybe you're tempted to think a certain way and be afraid or whatever. You shift your eyes from there and you focus on him. He is the way out. He is the way into peace and rest and joy. But it will be, this is why he calls it a good fight of faith. Because you're going to have to fight. My goodness, tonight I even had to fight to get on the technical wise. You're going to have to fight. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. And so I just want to encourage you that Jesus is the door. He is the way to life. John 10 also says that he has come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Does that mean you're just so prosperous with money and all that? What it means is you have more than enough. You have enough to share. You are content. You are filled with peace. You are filled with joy. And if you don't feel that way today, don't get down on yourself. I know one of the hardest things for Christians is you know that you're supposed to be feeling all these things. But sometimes, you know, we, have, we are fighting real battles. Real battles of depression and different things. I just want to encourage you to keep your eyes on that yellow door on Jesus. And you keep walking through the word. You keep walking in faith. You keep trusting him. You keep grabbing Jesus by the hand. And you don't stop. As I used to say skiing, you keep saying, hit it, God, hit it, God, hit it, God. Every time you fall, every time you make a mistake, you keep getting up, you keep moving forward. That power source, God, when I water skied, that boat would come back and pick me up. And I could say, hit it to the boat driver or I quit it. Do not quit it. Do not settle for door number two, three, and four. Pick door number one. Pick door number one. And remember... To pick door number one, I wrote this down. Remember, the Bible said in Genesis, sin desires to have you. What does our heart desire? Do we desire God over those other doors? Or do we, uh, we desire those doors, that way of thinking, that way of acting over him? There's no middle ground. We're going through one of those doors. We're going toward one of those doors every single day. And I just pray that as we go through every day that we can look at this. Is this a door that something's going to be on the other side of it that's going to try to control me? Or is, am I going through God's door where there's going to be freedom and there's going to be hope and there's going to be peace? And you're going to have to train your mind to think that way. You're going to have to have some grace with yourself, laugh at yourself, and, and grab the word. And you just keep saying, hit it, God. Hit it, God. I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to, to the best of my ability, I'm going to keep going toward you, and I'm not going to stop until the day I die. I pray this has encouraged you. I don't know if next week we're going to talk. I think we're going to talk about him being our father. I think that's what we're going to talk about, unless he changes it, because I know that there's a lot of people who maybe 
um, didn't have um, a role model as a father that uh, that's like our heavenly father, one that we can count on. You may not even have a father at all. And we're going to talk about that, Lord willing, next weekend. But I do want to attempt to close with this song. This has been on my heart. This is for my friend Michelle, who always says, please sing a song. Let me find the words. Um, let me wet my whistle. <laughs> okay. This is by Bethel, and it's Jen Johnson sings it, and it's called Come to Me. And the reason I chose this song is because, um, you know, we were warned not to go towards those doors, but Jesus has come to me. All who are weary, all who are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Every day, I want you to picture him opening up that door and saying, come on in. Come on in. I got things to show you. I got places to take you. I got love to wrap around you. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. I'll also give you less stress. <laughs> so here's how it goes. It says, I am the Lord your God. I go before you now, I stand beside you, and I'm all around you. And though you feel I'm far away, I'm closer than your breath. I am with you wherever you go. I got it too low, so let's go up a little bit. I am the Lord, your peace. No evil will conquer you. Steady now your heart and mind. And come into my rest. And oh, let your faith arise. And lift up your weary head. I am with you wherever you go. Come to me, I'm all you need. Come to me, I'm everything. Come to me, I'm all you need. Come to me, I'm your everything. Can you just picture him at that door saying, Come to me, I'm all you need. Oh, come to me, I'm your everything. I am the Lord, your peace. Do you need peace? <laughs> no evil will conquer you. Steady now your heart and mind. Come into my rest. And don't let your faith arise. Lift up your weary head. I am with you wherever you go. Come to me, I'm all you need. Come to me, you're my everything. And then it gets really high, but I won't have to go low. I am your anchor in the wind and the wave. And I am your steadfast, so don't be afraid. Though your heart and flesh fail you, I'm your faithful strength. And I am with you wherever you go. Come to me, I'm all you need. Come to me, I'm your everything. Come to me, I'm all you need. Oh, come to me, I'm your everything. And then it sings this little tag, and I just kind of picture these, these doors here. Don't look to the right or to the left. Keep your eyes on me. You will not be shaken. You will not be moved. Oh, I am the hand to hold. I am the truth. I am the way. Just come to me. 
I am all you need. Okay, so I butchered that song, but I just think it's beautiful. And I just think it's a great picture of every day. God saying, come to me, I'll give you rest. Oh, come to me, I'm your everything. He is your shelter in the storm. Go through the door. He's your way out. Go through the door. He is your peace. Go through the door. He is your answer. Go through the door. He's your everything. Father, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus for my friend that is watching right now, whether they're watching live, whether they're watching on their tablets in prison, whether they are watching on YouTube later, or maybe they're in a hospital or listening in their car. Father, wherever they are, the cool thing is you are there. You are with them. You are with me. You're working all things out for their good. You're working all things out for my good. You're holding us by the hand, your righteous right hand. And you say we don't have to be afraid. And you say we don't have to be afraid to come to you. And we don't have to be ashamed. And I'm thinking about... This, the parable of the prodigal son, Lord. You're the father who's, we're going to talk about next week, who's running after us. And you're saying, come to me. And you're giving us your robe and you're giving us your ring and you're giving us your sandals and you're saying, we're your child. Come in. Come in and live with me. And you're inviting us to come and find rest. You're inviting us to find a way out of our temptations, out of our weaknesses, God. And if we would just come to you, we would find everything that we need. So give us the courage. Give us the strength. Give us the wholeness. Father, I pray for my friends that are suffering tonight with mental anguish, with fear, with anger, with frustration. Father, that we would shut the door. Shut the door of unforgiveness towards others, towards ourselves. Wrong thinking. We'd shut the door. We'd shut the door of jealousy. And to shut the door of guilt and shame. And shut the door of self-pity and regret and guilt. Father, we shut the door and we open your door of truth and love and hope. By faith, we walk in and we receive all that you have for us tonight. I want you to repeat after me. If you are, are just struggling tonight, I want you to repeat after me. Father God, I come to you. I am weary of this battle. I come to your door, Jesus, and I come in Thank you that you are saving me for all eternity. By faith, I receive what Jesus has done for me. And by faith, I thank you that I am made whole. My mind is made whole. My family, my relationships are whole. I have no more addiction. I am made whole. And I have good pasture. I have provision and I have freedom. I am set free for where the spirit of the lord is father there is freedom so we come into your door tonight where the spirit of the lord is and there is freedom in jesus name we pray amen thank you for staying with me tonight thank you for your love and your support if there's anything our ministry can do for you do not hesitate to write to us You'll see at the end, um, if you're watching this on your tablets in prison, you'll see this at the end. There'll be some slides that come up that tell you how you can write to us. If you're watching this on YouTube, go to our email, or go to our website, victoriouslivingmagazine.com. Reach out to us, to Pat Avery, 352-478-2098, and we will help you walk through that door. We will help and pray with you and um, send you resources and materials. And if you're in prison, please write to that number. We can't take those calls um, because we can't take all the calls. <laughs> so write to us. We have a team that is there for you who will be corresponding with you and who will be um, walking that incarceration, incarceration journey with you. Take advantage of that. And when you're starting to transition out, 
We have resources that we will connect you with our partners, and we will be there to walk with you. We love you. God loves you. Keep running to that door every day. It's a second-by-second, moment-by-moment choice. God bless you. Bye-bye.